Oh yeah, it is the match preview. It's on the Red Men TV uh, and we are looking at Liverpool v Atalanta at Anfield. I'm Chloe Bloxham. I'm joined by Leah Bauer and Peter Kenny Jones as always for this. Uh, and let's get straight into it then. Kickoff is tomorrow. And I don't know about you, Leah, but I'm actually really excited for it to not be a Premier League game yeah. and me not have all that stress. I know it's a two-legged tie under Jürgen Klopp in a Europa League game and he enjoys two-legged ties. He really does. And you know the fact it's home, you got two legs. Not that you can breathe a little bit because that'll be my famous last words if we take our foot off the pedal now. But, you know, it's a little bit of go and enjoy yourself, figure it out. And then, you know, if the worst does happen, you've still got another match to fix it. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, Jürgen Klopp does love um, two-legged ties. It's <laughs> quite that simple to be honest uh, we've taken down some of the big boys when we've been underdogs you know that City in, in the Champions League I remember that one um, and uh, is it a case of Liverpool actually struggled last time out it's a disappointing result uh, we absolutely battered Manchester United but we've not got over the line there is it time to, to park that result now really focus on digging in doing everything we can against an Atalanta side who I've not seen since the last time we played them in the Champions League so I'm going into this all blind and assuming that's exactly how they play still um, but is it just a chance to regain focus on something else and, and have a little bit of a breather well, we hope so, don't we? I think we're going to be thinking like that as fans, yeah. but we just hope the players aren't. That's the, that's the problem. I'm sure that Jürgen and the rest of the staff will be saying in training yesterday, you know, we can't be thinking this is a game that we're, we're going to go and win 5-0 or even when we can relax in because Atalanta are going to be right up for it, aren't they? They're playing at Anfield. I think they, as you said last time, I think they won at Anfield last time. So yeah. they're going to be hoping for the shock and, as you say, being the underdog. So as much as we're going to go there, probably thinking, thank God we're not having to watch City or Arsenal scores on our phones or see where we are on the table. I think, you know, the players have got to make sure that they're professional, but, you know, why should we doubt that there'll be anything but that? Yeah, they do. But on, on the other side of that, it's it's an exciting tie. Um, you know, these are the moments as a football fan that you live for. You're in a quarter final with the chance to get to the semi final in Jürgen Klopp's last season, Leah. And it's like this is one of the last games under the lights at Anfield for Jürgen Klopp so let's make it special let's go out there and, and re real try and put a, a statement out for us but also for the manager yeah I mean the last quarter final in the Europa League at Anfield was against Dortmund and we all know how special that one was so yep. you know anything that gets the crowd going like that maybe not as tense I, <laughs> maybe not like it as tense as that that was a rough night yep. but you know anything that gets I mean the crowd's going to be you know it's Anfield at the end of the day isn't it yep. so you know, it's just, you know, quarter final, enjoy it. I think that's the main thing. We've all got to enjoy it. Just yeah. relish these last moments with Klopp. Yeah, it should be fun. We've played eight games, obviously, in, in the Europa League so far. We've won six. Um, and, I mean, the, the two games that we have struggled in, they have been away from home. Um, as for uh, Atalanta, they sit sixth in the Serie A right now. Uh, they've only won one of their last five league games, and it was a 3-0 win against Napoli, however. So, you know, that they've taken out quite yeah. a big, mm. a big um, dog there. But what do you actually expect from Atalanta? Because, like I said, they have not seen them since that Champions League run and a lot of Italian sides traditionally would sit 11 men behind the ball try and count here uh, try and just take something home with them uh, and get you in their stadium but it doesn't always feel like Atalanta do that yeah they've got some exciting players haven't they I think you know like the likes of Luchman who we'll, we'll all know obviously from, from Everton and I think they've got Daska yes. Macher up front who scored a few goals for them but um yeah, it's as you say, it's, it's hard to know because you know we're massive favourites for this competition of man this game. So it's whether they think take it back to their place or whether they try and catch us by surprise. Because you know if you've watched those two United games, you, you would think that we you could get at us at the back, can't you? So you know we just hope that people don't take inspiration from the fact that we've been struggling to score goals and it's just got to be our message. It's got to be just try and win it in the first leg and win it early, hasn't it? So you'd expect us to be exciting so therefore they're probably going to be hoping to soak it up a bit and catch us on the break so it's just again it's just about a professional performance isn't it and as I've looked at Atalanta before I think you know the, the, that win over Napoli I think was a big one because it keeps them in the European places above Napoli and they're obviously going to be wanting Conference League or Europa League but you know the chance to play at Anfield is, is massive for anyone and I said as much as we're all feeling quite relaxed this is possibly going to be a game that their season depends on you know if they go through they're going to 
be looking like we are at that other side of the tie. You know, we've we've all avoided Leverkusen until possibly the final. Obviously, you can't think too far ahead, but they're going to have similar thoughts that they'll fancy themselves if they beat us in the semis and then through to the final. So, as I said, like already three, four times, it's just about being professional and getting the job done. Yeah, and not being complacent. Uh, as for Atalanta, uh, they've won five and drawn three, so they actually haven't lost so far <laughs> in this competition. Uh, I'm just going to bring up, you know, some of the comments here. Uh, Callum is extremely um, confident with this one. I mean, I, I like it. I'd fair play. Uh, and then we've got rest Salah. I mean, we'll get on to that in a minute. Um, but as from my high pitched voice there, you could probably say I, I don't agree. Um, but yeah, Leah, it's a case of uh, the Reds need to get the job done. Are, are you looking to look? We spoke about Sheffield United a couple of weeks ago and loads of people were saying, let's look at goal difference. And when you start to look at those things, you get complacent and yeah. things like that happen where they come back in the game and it's a rocky period for Liverpool and Liverpool have to go up a gear. Is it a case of just taking an advantage to Atalanta or is it a case of actually you've got the Anfield crowd behind you, it's a European night under the light, Liverpool can really have a go with this side. Um, what are you looking for, for Liverpool to do and, and what is the advantage that you want them to at least have going into Atalanta? I think when you look at the last fixtures against Atalanta, they beat us 2-0 at home, we beat them 5-0 away. I mean, as much as you want to say that Anfield is that force, you know, sometimes it just doesn't go our way there I mean very rarely <laughs> but you know I don't think you can turn your nose up and just getting that bit of advantage taking you know taking that little bit of pressure off and then being able to not rest players but then thinking about that rotation and to maybe keep us in the league and then prioritising the league although you could argue now that the Europa League is maybe our best chance at getting yeah. a trophy well it's it's the one that it, look I understand we're level on points in the league mm. but that's not in our hands you've got yeah. us you've got to either get a 10 goal difference which you're not going to do right? like you're just not going to climb that back this is a case where this is actually in your hands yeah. like, you control your own destiny in the in this one um and we all know how much Liverpool are in love with European football. Yes, it's n normally a much bigger trophy, um, <laughs> but it's still one that Jurgen Klopp has not not yeah, had in his collection under under Liverpool. So it would be brilliant for him, wouldn't it, for it to be a full circle moment. I think his first season, he lost the Europa League final, he lost the, the League Cup final. Well, we've already done 50% of that. Let's go over and, and do the, the second half of it as well. Yeah, definitely. And... Like you said, it is a slightly smaller trophy, but it would just be nice just to finish off the collection for him. Yep. I mean, I wouldn't say... If if you asked me to prioritise the Premier League or the Europa League, I mean, I would... Before but, before yeah. the weekend, I would say Premier League all the way, but now sitting where we are in the Premier League, it's a little bit like, well, like you said, it's in our own hands. Well, I think... I don't know about you, Peter, but... This isn't the Champions League um, and I think you've got a little bit of breathing space. Not Look, Atalanta are going to be a really good side. I will not underestimate them. But you do have a little bit of that breathing space of all of these teams are looking at Liverpool and going, my God, these should not be... How, how unlucky are we to have these mm -hmm. in our league, in, in our you know competition? Because everyone's been saying that they're a Champions League side and we've proven it where we are in the league. So... Is it right to maybe assume that some of these teams fear us or does it put a bigger target on our back? Well, probably both, in it? But you know, I think the, the Sparta Pra boss said, didn't he? You know, it's, not, it's almost not fair that we're, we're in this competition. You know, you look, at, you look at Arsenal, you look at City, they're playing Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. And No no offence to Atalanta, but this is essentially like a Champions League group stage game for us, isn't yep. it? So if we were playing this in December, we'd probably be saying if there's a game at the weekend, rest four or five of them and, and go on. And, you know, we should have that feeling because we should be thinking, we're going to go in and win this game because as you say we've proven it in Europe we've proven it in the league that we're more than good enough to, to go and get a win against them um, it's just obviously proven why we're the favourites proven why we are a, a Champions League team which obviously we, our last year's form didn't deserve that that's why we're in this competition but we, we've treated it with respect pretty much all the way through we've played yeah. a lot of strong teams the, the only ones that we haven't are the ones that we've, we've slipped up on so I'm sure Jürgen and the rest of the players will know that you know we can't afford to to try and drop any players or, or switch it up and as you say it's just about getting that win and if we get a big win here we, we can essentially rest everyone yep. again at and even if we lose again next day as long as we've got a big enough lead that, that gives us a massive help for the for the title race which we know we're all prioritising Yeah Aaron in the comments is saying not the Aaron behind the camera for us uh, we need a, 
at least a two goal advan- advantage sorry minimum um, I think Salah needs to play hopefully start banging in the goals yeah maybe maybe actually that is a good point maybe yeah. it is a case of just let him go and let be him free again please because yeah. he looks like he's playing with shackles half the time <laughs> um, and Daniel I brought you up last because you said Jota likes this game Hattrick last time he played Atalanta and uh, we've got brilliant news at the fact that uh, an entire you know half of our squad is coming back into this team uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold was back in training on Tuesday he's been sidelined since Burnley in February Jota the slaughter I've got to say it it's, it's got to be uh, is back in training he was out since the uh, 17th of Feb which I, I think we all thought we got a bit lucky with that to be honest because yeah. I thought that was like an ACL injury or something I thought something. that was season done um, Alison Becker I've not heard of him in months <laughs> on end uh, is back he featured in Arsenal, against Arsenal nearly fab. Um, these are obviously players that you're not expecting to start but hopefully at least have an impact coming off the bench getting them back is massively important uh, Stefan Bajetic also returned to training he only played 72 minutes a season due to injury so yeah, there's a load of players who would be nailed on in our starting 11 here who yeah. are coming back who hopefully if you can give 15-20 minutes to at the end I mean I would hate to be Atalanta. You've ran around for 75 <laughs> minutes and then you're seeing Diogo Jota and Trent Alexander-Arnold come on. I'd, I'd, I'd really just want to hand in the towel. Um, so it's brilliant to have those players back. And also, this is a stepping stone for the next couple of games. We mentioned there that if you can, you know, knock... Atalanta out the park that's a game next week where I'm looking for maybe one or two of them to start to make sure they get that fitness back because you're not expecting them this week, this weekend or obviously on Thursday to, to start those games because of how long they've been out but to drip feed them back in is quite a scary thought yeah I mean I think it's come at the perfect time knowing that we've got this Thursday and next Thursday then before we've got our league games on the weekend so like you said if they get 15 minutes tomorrow and then maybe another 15 minutes on Sunday. You can then have them maybe for a full, maybe like 60 minutes then on the Thursday and then they're back ready then full match fitness then to go for the rest of the running for the Premier League then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the the one sad news that we do have is uh, with Tottenham who did miss yeah. training Peter on Tuesday. He obviously got that knock, missed Sheffield United, I think it was, came back, uh, got taken off um, for United, which we all assumed was more of a tactical reason. Uh, not seeing him... I mean, does that worry you in any way because of the license it gives McAllister when he plays? What what would you be doing there if he can't play? Yeah, so it, it would have been perfect if Bajetic was a few weeks ahead. Obviously, yeah. it'd be a great game to have him in. I'd, I'd really, like, obviously, I'm sure we'll talk about it later. I'd like to see like the likes of McAllister and Thomas like him and a bit of a rest, but you know, our only other real options there are maybe you play Joe Gomez again, which I probably wouldn't do just because it's still quite an important game quarter final. You play Trent there when he's not ready, or you'd play McAllister as I said, I'd like to have rested, but that's probably going to be the option we go with. You know, Klopp always likes to be respectful to the opponent and we're going to go as strong as we can. So I'd expect if Endo isn't fit to, to put him in there, but you know how durable Endo is and with the players that are coming back, you know, it would still wouldn't surprise me if, if he did get a nod because you, you don't know the reason why he wasn't there. But yeah, I think at present, if, if Endo is not available, then I think it has to be McAllister. At the six, yeah. And look, it's... Um as long as he's not out long term, it's it's a game where I wouldn't risk him anyway. I don't know about you, Leah. If there's if there's a, like it could just be the Kevin De Bruyne situation yesterday where he just started vomiting. Like the lad just could have a bug. Yeah. Um, but if it's a knock, I would not be risking him at all because ultimately Liverpool should have enough on the pitch to be able to get at Atalanta and cause some problems and for me that Palace game you know that I'm always going to prioritise the league games because I just back Anfield um, and Liverpool in European competitions a bit more because of the two-legged tie that you yeah. have um, so I mean for you what is I mean I'll let you do it as a joint combination you can give me a start in 11 um, but I will just throw some names in there that you do miss if you do and I'm going full strength. Are you going full strength? Yeah. That's not filming with confidence. <laughs> no, is it? Like a step down maybe from full strength. Really? Mm. What about you, Peter? But yeah, I tell you about 90%. That's probably yeah. like really? rest one or two. Not yeah. like more okay. just because of how much football they're playing and how much football is to come and no breaks. And this is the whole point that we're excited about. The fact that City and Arsenal are playing massive yeah. teams is that we can, even if we take the foot off the gas in terms of not playing at 100%, but yeah, I'd still I'd take a couple out. 
Great. Well, um, I I was putting out my insightful. Sh- this is my Champions League now, lads. This is I'm seeing it as Champions League. I do not care. Like I need to win this trophy. Uh, but you've said there you're gonna do ninety percent. I feel like you're gonna name some of the players that are in my starting eleven that I just think deserve to to be starting and therefore are in my my favourite eleven right now. Uh, but let's do a combined starting eleven, starting from your goalkeeper, which I assume everyone will have Keller in goal yeah, for that yeah. one. It's too early to bring Alison back, isn't it? Yeah. yeah um I mean, where you fit Alison Alison's got to come back. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. Yeah. Um when we can do that though is is a different thing. Right, start starting off with your right back to left back, please, let's go. I think Connor Bradley, I think, you know yeah. he's he is our best option at the minute anyway, but Trent well, obviously, not obviously Trent available. Not, Trent not. Well, yeah, and I think with Trent coming back as well, there's no need to rest. No, there's no need to rest him yet because he's going to exactly. play yeah. the next two or three, and yeah. then Trent's yeah. probably going to be in the rest of the season. Who is your centre back pairing then for this one? I think you've got to play Kwanzaa. I think shake off the weekend. If he doesn't play, mm-hmm. then it maybe dwells on him a bit more. Yep. Just get a good ninety minutes under his belt, and then carry on. Kwanzaa's played seven of the eight matches in this competition, and I think that's correct. You, you've got to back the lads, and yeah. that, that situation. Could happen to any of those players yeah. on the pitch. Yeah. Um, I expect him to start. You expect him to start. Yeah, that I would have picked him as well. I think it's just I don't know what's going on with Kanate. I don't know why he's not yeah. playing. Whether it's he can only play one game a week or whatever it is, and the cycle at the moment seems to be he's playing the midweek ones, which I'd much rather he was playing the weekend ones. So if it means that Quanta plays a Kanate's in at the weekend and that's his new cycle, then I'd do that. But as you say, you know, to get that mistake out the way and just. You want to play football again as soon as you do anything like that. And, you know, he made up for it in the game. You know, yeah, he, he took on Fernandez, w- helps us win that pen. And but yeah, I think it'd be good for his confidence to shake it off. And if I go on, I put Van Dijk aside, I sat alongside yeah. him, and then hopefully Canate is back in for the weekend, and then they can keep rotating from then on. And you left back. You've got to choose between three: Gomez, Robbo, Costas. Um, I think on the on the the week show, the podcast, or whatever, someone mentioned Costas and I very much lobbed him out the window I, I totally understand but once again I'm putting out my best 11 in my mind what What are you doing are you putting Costas um, perfect if I see Costas perfect I, mm. I, I like the lad I just was rotating between Gomez and, and Robbo there my first two what are you doing see I was going to say maybe Costas so am I getting locked out the window now? <laughs> I, I don't say I was going to say the same as that. <laughs> but only, only because I think Robbo has been injured, that's all. And yep, I think he yeah. could have that rest and I'd happily play him in the one after. I just think, as you say, we're going to have so many games and we've got midweek Premier League games coming up. I think it's good to have him and then maybe even bring Gomez on and you've got your your two players who are playing who maybe need more football. Okay. And, but I think I was looking before, that he started the Southampton game in the Cup and the game before that was yeah. the Arsenal one where he did his shoulder. So he really hasn't had much football no. and we don't want a position where Robbo or, or Gomez get injured and we have to throw him in and he's, he's not got any minutes. Yeah. You don't, but um, I, I was the, the reverse for you. You've thrown Costas in first. I was Robbo in first, make sure I get this three goal lead yeah. that I really want and then... Uh, yeah, next Thursday yeah, well, cost oh, yeah. us all the way um, but I, I've so it's, respected they're all good options that's the good yeah, thing yeah, it's, exactly. it's not like we're going to be good no, nothing, to any of them so. nothing's yeah. a wrong choice yeah. at the yeah. end of the day uh, midfield three then we've just mentioned it let's do I mean we don't know whether Wataro and those fit so we'll have to do Wataro and those slash who's sitting yeah. in DM for you if Wataro and those not fit <laughs> It'll just have to be McAllister, isn't it? Like, See, it's just... we're all saying Macca, right, yeah. But someone's just made a really good point that Curtis Jones needs minutes and Curtis Jones can do the six. And I'd That's rather very, that yeah. if I get to see yeah. Harvey, uh, if I get to see uh, McAllister at, at, at the number eight position, to be honest, I am sacrificing that. Um, what, are you doing that or... Now that you've said that, that sounds like a great chance. And a great, a great chance to play that option as well yeah. see how it works he needs minutes as well yeah. doesn't he Peter yeah. so um, I, I, is Curtis still, in your starting 11 I'd still go McAllister number 6 but okay. my, my plan was to play Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott in front of him just because I think yeah. Harvey's impacts he definitely deserves minutes. He seems to be the Europa League player. You know, I think him and Endo were starting pretty much all the games. Obviously, if Endo's not fit and you take him out, I think Gravenberch is the one that misses out. And maybe this competition and this game should have him written all over it. But mm-hmm. I don't think he's shown enough to to be given the start. As I say, Elliot was amazing again at Old Trafford and has been every time he's come on. And then Curtis Jones, he needs the minutes and he's played the last couple of games. I think it'd be good for him to start and then maybe yeah. ring a Gravenberch on at the hour mark or something like that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't think. Um, I think Sobberslein needs a bit of, not a rest, but just to be on the bench maybe for a little bit as well. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I agree. Uh, you, Harvey Elliott has 
before yeah. Sobber's life for me now in the in the pecking order. I'm so sorry, but that's happened. Uh, someone's just lobbed in Gomez at the six. Let's give him a rest, probably. I I, yeah. I, I like I don't mind it. Once again, <laughs> I don't mind it. There's so, this is the thing. There's so many players now that we've got available who I see in that squad, and I'm sound with the Costas there. I'm sound with you know one of the young lads in, in midfield if we needed to. Um, but you know. Ultimately, Curtis Jones needs minutes. He's shown that against Manchester United. He needs to get back in the rhythm. Uh, McAllister, I just want on the pitch at all times because I love the lad. Um, and Harvey Elliott has been such an influential player for us in this entire season. Um, so, you know, we, we'll hopefully see what happens there. Right, the front three then. And um, this is where... Okay. This is probably where we're all going to be very different between each <laughs> other. Uh, Peter, I'll come to you first. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You give me your front three. Yeah, well, I think... As, as the, the comment before, I think Salah does need to play because I would like yep. to see him get a few more goals. The one I'm resting, I think it'll be Diaz and I'd play mm-hmm. Nunes left and Gakpo through the middle. Mm-hmm. Um, only because I think one of, them, one of them needs resting and you know I think Nunes could do with a couple of goals if, if he can as well. So I'd have him on the pitch. I don't think Diaz, obviously as much as it'd be great if he did score, I don't think it'd affect his mood too much going into the weekend if he's not playing. Whereas I think Nunes needs to get a couple of goals as I said and then Cody Gakpo, you know, I think it I'd be surprised if we're not all selecting him because I think he, it's written all over that he deserves a start. You know, he's a bit hit and miss, is a bit harsh, but he hasn't been at his full fine and best. He was good against United. He deserves another start. I think his last one was Sparta Prague as well, and he, he did what he did all right there. But yeah, that that's my front three. Yeah, Casey Gakpo has played six games in this competition, scoring four goals. Obviously, we mentioned there. I actually thought he did come on and he influenced the game against Sheffield United. Yeah. He gets his goal, and I, th- I thought against Manchester United he was really good as well. Um, so, uh, are you going with that front three, or have you got any changes in there? See, I was going to disagree. I was going to uh, rest Nunes keep Diaz put Gakpo through the middle yeah. but then also thinking about Sparta Prague and how like, Nunes is two goals are, are these competitions kind of built for him to be a bit more chaotic because it's completely different systems you know an Italian yeah. side he is just chaos isn't he, he so is. is he built for this or would you rather if if we're struggling he's going to make in my head he makes a bigger impact off the bench than Diaz does so then I'm thinking you're struggling 70 minutes bring him on you get the goals secured move on to next week yeah what I would say is we tend to rest Nunes more than Diaz and I think that's just because Nunes has had a worse injury record he's been out several mm. times this season yeah. um, but once again I, I could see I think Gakpo has to start yeah. I'd, I'd love me front three that I usually go with but I think because this is like the League Cup was Gakpo's competition this feels like a Gakpo competition yeah. um, I think Salah has to start like you mentioned there it, it just has to be and he will want to play he will want to come on and just score at trick and be like wonderful mm. like this is too easy for me lads um, like we've seen him come off the bench many a times and just get a goal and it's a bit unfair to the opposition um, and also we need to kill a game as, as quickly as possible Liverpool if we can go in to the weekend knowing that next Thursday we can put a heavily rotated side out we can give minutes to the players that need the minutes then that is vitally important but I'm absolutely sound with that line up like I said I'm f- I was fine with any line up because I enjoy all the players I'm going to ask you for your five subs now though I am gonna, you can save one for a, an injury just in case so I'm asking for your four subs now McAllister is one of my first you've got to bring him off at some point there yeah. mm. that would be my thing um, if you're starting salary you're taking salary off at some point depends on the score that's my thing yeah okay. well, if, assume we're winning 3-0 and yeah, he comes off all yeah. day so I'd, I'd be putting like maybe put Harvey on the right and, and bring Gavin Bear on yeah. Yeah. maybe you know it, it depends which which of the kids have done on the bench if it's going that well you know look at Clark maybe it could be one of their last performances hopefully we're all playing they're all playing the week after because it means that we've done so on the first leg and then obviously like I'd love to see Dan's get another run out and stuff like that mm-hmm. but you know I think it depends obviously who's starting if it's my team starting and, and Simicas is at left back and said I wouldn't be upset with like a Gomez coming on and then you want to take McAllister off as you say so it, it just depends who's on the pitch like, but yeah if we're 3-0 it. we've done this on in this competition quite a few times we've done 45 each for Canate and Verge yeah at what point yeah. maybe that I, look 
I've just said this is a Champions League tie in my head. Like I'm yeah. seeing it as that level of importance. Yeah. So in those games, Virgil and I just would not be coming off the pitch. Yeah. But if if we've got that ability, you might you might bring on Canate, especially if he's you know not played the last game. Give him a couple of minutes in there. Uh, quickly give me a score predictions. If you don't like doing them, don't, don't do them because I don't I don't, I don't, I don't do give them. score predictions. Nope. It's just I, you, Peter. I hate them as well. To be honest, but go I'll um... right. Let, let's say 3 1. We're 3 0 up. We get complacent score at the end, which yeah. means we still have to turn on a bit in the next leg, which I'd obviously rather it was 6 0 and we don't have to do anything. But that's, that's what I'll say. Yeah, exactly. And look, Atalanta are probably going to pose a really good game of football uh, because they're a, they're a decent side. Yeah. They've caused us problems before. Um, but also, I am 100% back on the Reds, and that's what I truthfully care about. Uh, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to create an atmosphere that I will uh, enjoy, the players will hopefully enjoy. And hopefully, it just means that you know Anfield can intimidate an, uh, an opponent and hopefully we can do that but thanks so much for joining us for this one uh, really appreciate it let's hope the Reds do come away uh, with quite a comfortable lead to take into that second leg so we can rest a couple of players but until then up the Reds Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Redmen content, be it podcast, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.